Hello again, everyone. It is your Black Knight and we're in Leeds today. Now, Leeds is an interesting system in the freelancer universe because, as you know, as you can see here, every character when you're playing this game is as in Trent. We all get to have the same look here, even though we all developed our own characters from a multiplayer standpoint. That was only really expressed through fan fiction. Really, we had a we had our own neural nets. The, the neural net is this thing up here, neural net lodge, which doesn't have anything. Normally, it has in the in the single player game. You can see the entire history of what your your notes were, your your diary, as things went through. And we wrote we, we wrote our own diary based on what was happening in the game. And that was the thing. And mostly, that really started on, on the Get Honest server. I don't know if, if um, I have to remember if Flu has a, a neural net section. I wonder if we, could, if we could get that going if it doesn't. I have to get back into those forums. It's been too long. But Leeds is important because it is the home of Edison Hood. Famous Your bounty hunter dies. This is the Colony News Service. It really gives you all these little great old stories. It's a, it's a great, great kind of deal here. All the little bits of lore that's sticking in this game. But Lee's, as I recall, and you know, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. This is this is his home world. All right, this is our stop. Thank you for your help. And it's a murky, muddy kind of place. It's supposed to have been polluted by a lot of a lot of different mining operations and industrial operations that's turned this whole beautiful star system muddy. I'm not sure exactly how you'd actually turn a star system muddy if it wasn't kind of muddy to begin with. I mean that's an awful lot of material. That's an awful lot of smoke, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I'm thinking probably that's a thing here. Oh yeah. Gruzobuck in Stuttgart. It's, again, early in the morning on a Saturday, so I've, I've got the server largely to myself. Stop. Now, I've been thinking, as far as trying to develop some videos, you know, based on Freelancer, I thought, you know, I wonder if it'd be worthwhile to go through the single player, uh, you know, story again. I haven't done the single player story since 2000, 2003, 2004, somewhere in there. I mean, I have save files, everything, they've everything done, and you can cruise around and get whatever you want. But I haven't, I haven't started over with the experience of all that I have. But, you know, I don't know, there are a couple walkthroughs on the, on the YouTubes there. I mean, we do have, that does exist. It would be redundant for other stuff. I'd be bringing my own opinion, of course. My own insights into everything. But I don't know, is there a, you know, is anybody interested in that? Is this, is that, is, has everybody who's interested in freelancer already seen it, done it, been there? You know, that might be a, that might be a thing. I mean, maybe it's, it's just a simple case. Of, uh, you know, yeah, that's just great. You can you do that if you want, but, you know, we're, we're good, you know. And I'd have to uninstall my flu mod, because you cannot do the single player with this mod installed, because it, one of the, the things about the flu mod is that it boosts the battleship guns to an actual, real, kind of accurate level. All the bases, everything that would be shooting at you, they're going to be giving you a one-shot kill, so you don't really want to deal with, with, with this. You're going to get annihilated if you try to play this with the mod installed. So there's your interesting tip of the day. If you're going to go back to single player, turn off the mod in, in Freelancer Mod Manager. Top of the day. So, what can I get for you? What I need is some info. You got anything? I don't know you. First time here? Uh, yeah. He lives here. You know, your rep could use a little fixing for a small fee. Keep talking. I'm here. 
the client. Sorry, no deal. We'll meet again, Trent. First time here? Not really, no. I they grew up on this planet. And there's only one bar. Nice thing about the flu mod, you get the higher paying uh, missions on these things. We're gonna do, you know, this is my neutral ship, so I'm not doing any one of my neutral, any of my many, many, many neutral ships. Because the one key to system battles back in the day was you had to have a neutral ship. Otherwise, you know, all the AI would be shooting at you while everybody else was shooting at you. But yeah, definite disadvantage. Not so much in these systems. I mean, the little ships here weren't going to do much to you, but it's out in the, the far systems where you're dealing with outcasts and stuff like that. Major, major problem. Have I never explored leads in this? Maybe it is, Mike. Well, it's my first time here as far as this character. Jump gate. Let's take this. Hey, don't fall asleep on me. Out here, you'll get us killed. Edinburgh jump gate. It's been so long uh, since I've played... Uh, Freelancer is you know, I don't remember which systems were added in as part of the uh, the mod, which were original. I think Edinburgh is an original system. I think it's a, a system of not much note as far as the storyline goes. I think what was it? that was one where there's a bunch of environmental rebels in there. Are the Gaians in that one? They fly around in spaceships saying, stop flying around in spaceships. It's an interesting thing. It's... Exhaust is printing everything. So, do we hop through and take a quick look at Edinburgh, or do we just continue the full exploration? I think, I want to say it was a dead-end system anyway. There wasn't much to it. We can zip around there and zip back. Zip. Zip it. Zip it. Uh... As far as the history, you know, online history, my online history with uh, leads, not really so much. I mean, there were some system battles, I think, that we launched from here. I don't think I, obviously, I didn't use this yet. I could have, because I could have just gone, you know, right to the, the immediate base. I don't know if that was the first time I landed at that base. We would have, we would have staged out of the, the base that I started out this video in. I haven't done much with it since. There you go. Now, if you're, depending on how you want to play this through, see, stations like Aberdeen is where you'd set up for a system battle. Depending on how you want to roleplay, you can have a lot of action going on here. You can have a non-neutral ship that everybody kind of is okay with. It's, it can be a very quiet sort of experience. Or, I mean, you, the, the other reason you'd have a neutral ship is if you're really in for PvP and you're doing other roleplaying and you just don't want to have to deal with the, uh, the AI. Not all my ships are neutral. We'll do that. That's something for another video. We'll do a, a non-neutral cruise through here. Maybe that's a better idea. Maybe that's something I should really think about. Oh, you'll notice I've got the wings uh, trimmed off on this. But normally this has huge wings, but it makes you a much bigger target. Just showing off the... I wonder, if you're designing a bar, okay? Why would you have these huge drop pops into machinery? That's a thing. I, I just don't know. Aha, see that's right, the All guy is. This is the colony New service. London has asked the Canterbury based company to provide tangible evidence of its progress in all terraforming efforts following the latest funding request by the troubled air operation. Officials at Planform blame the Guyans for causing the air transforming project to f fall so disastrously behind schedule. The constant attacks that, su that we suffer from the terrorists have created many unanticipated delays, which that would. I mean, you gotta give them credit for that. The Green Front has called for a full government audit of the Iron and Harris projects. See, the Green Front is kind of the official political uh, front for the uh, for the Guyans. That's why, at least, hey, at least my memory is good. What the political situation was here in Edinburgh. Oh, 
Okay, now we see a big cloud up here. Alright, this is where we get off. Thanks for your help. And usually, when you see a big specific cloud like that, there's a couple of them. It's worth flying into it. Just so you can see what's in the cloud. Sometimes it's hiding things. Now we could pro almost certainly have just taken the high speed path straight to um, yeah, you know, straight to one of the planets. But hey, all right. See now, this cloud has come up on the the Isla Ice Cloud. So it's an ice cloud. We can expect it debris. Or, as one racer called it back in the 80s when ESPN was first on. The 80s? I think it was the 80s. Poor guy from somewhere out in, I want to say, the Midwest. Let's put the scanner on infinite. We got a weapons platform. Oh, Islay Base. See? You could probably have found that with the, um, yeah, patrol lines. But he'd spun out and they asked him, well, what happened to you? Well, we got to do some Derbis out in turn three. And I'm like, Derbis. 30 years, 30 years later, I still remember Derbis. One of the, one of the nice things about a uh, neutral rep is you can land at all these bases. And if I wanted to start doing missions, let's say I became an environmental terrorist, I could just I could start doing that. What do what do environmental terrorists sell? Mm, oxygen and water. Okay, that makes sense. They're buying it. They're selling it. They have a bar. Now, it be one of the things you gotta realize is that you can get missions from them. Okay, and the missions here will be enough to. Uh, you're, you're attacking orbital spawn crews. You're, you can actually be a terrorist and attack, you know, you know, actual these corporations here. If, if you really want to go that route, but they don't pay well. But they're also not hard missions. So, what does the news board say? The same thing. All the ah, no, here. For you. This is the you get the insurance. same story there, but now you get. The, the terrorist uh, kind of news are, you know, the war between the Red Hessians and the Corsairs has been fought for many years. That was the basis um, for one of my um, my characters. My character, you know, my character, the black, my only character in this game, the Black Knight. I made his history um, that he was basically a liberty agent that had been sent to help the Corsairs to make sure that the battle was kind of balanced that the, the Red Hessians and the Cor Corsairs would just keep fighting. If, if one started to get the upper hand, they would the, the main the main houses would send help to keep the other one, you know, keep it keep it balanced so that the fight would continue. And then both the both sides would just keep killing each other, which seems like the kind of thing is they, they nobody likes the Red Hessians, nobody likes the Corsairs. All right, let's keep them all just slaughtering each other. No Junkers and Kusari. He tells you all of the political aspects of the game. It's really great. The Hogosha and, and their, their issues with the Junkers, because the Hogosha are, you know, doing their kind of thing, too, and it's, we don't need any competition. The children of the Hispania. We, we'll find the Hispania at some point. We know where that is. That's, it's an interesting thing. But, you know, the outcasts and the Corsairs never did get along after that. There's no intrinsic hatred between them, only a ruthlessness that goes beyond any common ties. The gold of Dublin. The Corsairs have poured into Bretonia from the southern border worlds to find rich hunting grounds and fields of gold. This puts them at odds with the Bretonian Grimble group with the Mollies who claim Dublin and its gold is theirs. See, the Mollies and again. You would think that the, the, the Corsairs would win that one, but they've got better ships. You know, generally speaking, the Corsair and Outcast ships are the best ones in the game. Except for little gems like this, like that were mod in this Blood Dragon. And one could argue that the Blood Dragon's it's, it's a niche vehicle at best. It's not the best thing. Alright, this is the end. 
scanners on. Thanks for the help. We could get this jump hole on our map. You slay. The radio tower will tell you how to say it. You slay. You have to hit the dock button within 10k. That's a, that's a thing. Sometimes it'll fake out because if it's a planet, you just hit 10k and the docking ring's on the other side. You have to get closer. That was one of the, the best things about this game, because you can't find everything. Can you get a full map? Well, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, I, you know, I, I am. So, all right, so we punch up here. We're in Leeds. Back to Leeds. All right, see, we've got... Now we're all the way up here. I'm under fire. And zoom in out. Now, that will take you out here, and so we, we're, we're not too... You know, there's other places we can find here. We don't need to fly from here. There's other... We can, we can get to the other locations via jump... Uh, and again, if you don't have a neutral ship, these areas are more dangerous. That might be a thing. Maybe, maybe after this video, we'll park the blood dragon. We'll find something that's a little bit, a little bit dicier, a little bit uh, more interested in mixing it up. So that you get a good feel. You take the top line or the. Uh, I guess we'll do that. We'll take it past a couple other points. Go <coughs> 34k. Wonderful the environments that you get in this game. Let's put on turret view. If you don't have turrets, you can go to turret view and just look all around. And the shield, the shield lights, depending, you know, will vary depending on what kind of shield you have up. So I've got, I believe, what do I have on this thing? Is this a graviton shield on this? Barrier, molecular. So it's, it's lighting up a molecular shield. So it comes up with that little kind of octagon sort of thing. I have, a, I have to look at some of the other ones. Just cruising along. Ah, we're out of the ice cloud. So I don't know what's on the, on on the back side here. Is that just a, a patrol point? Obviously, we have a planet here. Planet Gaia. I recall Planet Gaia. I don't think you can dock at that. I uh, can dock at the luxury luxury liner Sheridan. Oh, that was the deal. All right, that's just a. Uh, Let's tar if we target Gaia. Yeah, yeah. You see, docking is not an option even. It doesn't come up. That's not a planet you can land on. But you can land on the luxury liner. Dock. Which is just overlooking the beautiful planet. And of course, getting blasted away at by tiny little Gaian ships and they can't afford really good ships. So they get shot to pieces. Roger that. Your request to dock is granted. Yeah, of course. To dock this, one. Is, this is a permanent base. It can't be damaged. So they really, really shouldn't be shooting at it. I wonder if I could talk Robocop into selling me a luxury liner, even though I don't have an active plan. I'm thinking probably not. It'd be cool just to have a luxury liner. Let's see, what's the news? Same news? All the news that's fit for you. This is the Colony News Service. Yeah, this is more, you see, it's more cleansed news. They don't have all the, uh, the stuff going on. But here, you can you can fight for orbital spawn cruise lines and shoot the guy in. See, you can pick whatever. Oh, here, Corsairs. Have been a problem. Yeah, okay, so they're shooting at Corsairs. That's interesting. I guarantee you both are in the uh, 
both are in the game. Now, if you could, interesting thing about every base, every base is going to have a different flavor of weapons available. And some some bases are very specific in that there's certain things you can get. Yeah, I'll get battleship uh, flak turrets and stuff like that. And all, but, but you know, those are modded in. Some have crap. This one has mostly crap. But some have very specific things, like the advanced debilitators that you know, anti-shield weapons that you need for your for cargo vessels. What's out here? Yeah, another dust cloud. I haven't spent a lot of time in Edinburgh, I'll tell you. Even when we were, you know, really knocking around in the uh, in the Bretonian systems and fighting for them, we didn't spend. It's, it's it's back on its own out here, and yet it has its own interesting story. I think it's it's a, a niche system. If you really want to role play, I set up a role play character where you're fighting for the environment, or if you're just a corporate stooge. Um, yeah, this is a perfect place for it. Especially if you want to use a smaller ship. Like, if you don't want to use one of the main ships... Whoa, what happened here? Oh, that was weird. I had another... I'm getting massive frame drops out here. Still massive frame drops. 66? Ah, this computer, you know... That's the same thing. I, I thought I was blaming Team Fortress 2. That, that's the same thing that happened to me in Team Fortress 2. I wonder what's doing to my voice right now. All kinds of interesting things. But um, let's let's pause for a moment here. Let's do the time warp again. I'm going from 150 frames per second to 13 when I record. Maybe I'm just maybe the hard drive's just fragmented. I might have to take a little bit of a break here and really finish editing everything. You know, it's clear everything up, get myself some... This looks like a base. That looks like a base. I think it was meant to be a base. Let's cut engines here. It's not... It isn't a base. There's nothing you can nothing you can dock here. There is a Tau-31 jump hole 3, 3 point uh, something came away. Let's, let's punch bases up. Go to. Jump holes are just great because I mean that, that's a shortcut. That you really you know sometimes that's that's a major uh, way to sidestep stuff in the game, especially if you're playing non-neutral and you don't want the, the the gates shooting at you. If you're playing as a criminal, you gotta love the jump holes. Wow, just frame rates are just so. Not saying I have a frame rate of 83, and yet it's pretty much frozen. I, I really have to look into something like you know, what's it called, OBS? I have to get different different capture software. I've been using. Uh, let's, let's, this is one of my favorite systems, simply because it's just that pretty. And I think we're going to save this one for another day. Let's head back. Looks so good here, just like... Just sparkling along. I mean, you got to realize, this game, in a modern sense, is not that graphically intensive. I shouldn't be having any kind of frame drop. So it's got to be something to do with my recording software. Which I don't think has been updated in a long time. I'm using Fraps, which is an old, old way of recording stuff. It gives you massive files to, to process. And so that's... This, it's, it's not real efficient. Because there's not much out here. Usually they don't put anything out here if, you know, it doesn't have a line to it. Like, there shouldn't be anything too far out. This here would be a, a, a thing we could do. They're pretty consistent with that. I mean, we've, we've done stuff where we've flown through the uh, the dead reaches of space, and I, I could do that at some point offline here. Not not, not we're not going to stream that for you. I might not stream this the whole way. I have enemy contact in my sights. Now, now nothing's really changed, but I'm still now I'm cruising at a 
I'm recording. I am recording at 120 frames per second here. That's what's showing up. I mean, probably is re actually recording it at 30, but I mean, the uh, my frames per second as far as what I'm seeing is up at 120, and I'm not having any issues. So, I mean, is it Backblaze kicking in or doing something that's messing with my uh, my frame rate periodically? Is it the fact that I'm uploading a different video as we speak? Not a lot. You have to parallel process a lot. You know, there's a lot to do. We cruise past the twin sons of Edinburgh. Ah, making a quick adjustment there. It's it's an autopilot, but it's gonna go around the suns. So you don't explode. But having two suns does let you see the ship really well. See me in there? There I am! Hi! You can see me. I'm driving. Wee. And you're talking, this game is from, back in 2003, it was graphically intensive. My goodness, it was just, you know, it was a stunner. Most incredible thing I'd ever seen. But now, yeah, there's no reason I don't care what's going on. No reason that, you know, a modern processor. And I realize my computer is, let's see, let's do the math now, about four years old. Still, shouldn't have any issues. There should be no frame drops on this. So, I, I don't know. We're going to have to take a multi-pronged approach to this. Do I try and get fresh uh, recording software and take it from a different, a different track? Do I, do I just try and, you know, render the hundreds of gigs of, uh, of video that I have on this hard drive? Then another, I have like a terabyte that I have to go through. Most of it GTA. That still has to be rendered. I've, I've got months of GTA videos already rendered and a bunch more than I have to do. And so many to voice over. It's just, it's craziness. But I want to get some other material up, so I'm just doing more stuff like this. Trying to generate some stuff, trying, but you know what? Maybe there would be a benefit towards really taking a little bit of a break and rendering the heck out of stuff. So, if you see the next several videos are off-world trading, that's probably because I was trying to work on the computer and and do some things like that. You know, Planet Air. Should we go check out Planet Air? I think we need to. I think that needs to be a go-to. And let's change the viewpoint. There we go. Can't dock at Planet AR because apparently they're still terraforming it, but there is a base. Perth. Dock. Perth Station. I love how they... they Roger that. Your request to dock is granted. Please proceed to dock one. I love how they throw back to, you know, to all the old Earth locations because, you know, everybody here was nearly a thousand years ago. Attention all units in the a refugee this from Earth. Earth. We are reading no more hostiles on our scanners. Acknowledged. It's a great storyline. Now, do they have uh, shoot the guy in missions on this one? I bet you they do. Maybe it's still Corsairs. You never know. I have no news. Outcasts. I wonder why outcasts. Aha! Here we are. A group of guy in ships. So if you really want to stop the environmental terrorists, kill them all. There you go. <coughs> it's an option. I think I. I think I am going to. Rotate through. This is Bretonia Police, Omega. Mix up the ship's freelancer Alpha 3 1. I'm commencing a scan on your cargo bay for contraband. I'm running empty. The Dublin Jump Hole. Bounce back. That wasn't on my, um. 
I wasn't on my radar range before, so that'll give us a new place in Dublin. See, you just keep winding back around, and then we're back to Dublin. Yeah, I'll park the ship in Dublin and then come back with something that people want to shoot at. Because although I very much like the Blood Dragon. Hmm. I mean, I've got a fleet of ships. I wonder if you should I pick something that's lower level? Just to, you know, give you a, a, a freelancer feel of things? Dog. Should I go criminal? Should I go law-abiding in the wrong places? Of course, then you can't land at all the bases if you're, gonna, if you're not in a neutral ship. So that's a... I don't know what I'm doing. Next. We'll have to see. How far out are we here? Not too far from the hood. What? Let's zip back to the hood for the short term here. Although, you know, we could probably... Eh, you know what we could do? Let's bounce it back to Edinburgh. Dog. We'll bounce it back to Edinburgh. Eventually back in the leads. And we can continue on there. We may not continue consecutive videos of the same ship. I have a feeling that I'm gonna need this blood dragon. I'm trying to ponder and plan. As we speak, as we speak, as we're talking here, you're seeing it all gel and come together. It might not be. It might not be before we, um... Area clear. No bandits in sight. Go to. We've cleaned up the hard drive and gotten a lot of stuff done. So there may be a little bit of a break here in the Freelancer videos. If I do some other spaced out Saturday kind of stuff, but... Not the close. Let's, let's do the time warp again here. Okay. Let's, let's check this out. One of the things you can find as you're just zipping along randomly are little things like this. An asteroid miner. Let's kill engines here and check this out. Vigorously working along. Fully animated. Actually working on there, drilling in an asteroid. I don't know if this one if you can you can zoom in too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. crashing into it. Let's, let's, let's cut engines here. Just use thrusters to move around. Can we fly in on this thing? There is there are gaps in them. There we go. There's a good view. The asteroid miner is a neat ship, and which, oh here, check out the guns. Obviously, the Gaians would probably go after that. Let's see, what's, what's, uh, what's our ship scan? Yep, Gaians. Booga, 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 booga. Booga, 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 booga. Interesting a side note, if, you're, if you've got the flu mod installed, the Asteroid Miner, I don't remember what it costs, is an actual playable ship in this game. It's the, it is the largest ship you can have without a clan affiliation. Like you have to have... Um, some kind of organized organized team on the server to get the bigger ships. Like if you don't if you're if you're not a political faction inside the society of the game, if you don't have at least five people playing with you, I wanna say it was the old rules. All were in the same tag, just like I have here. That's my tag. If I had five more people run the base tag, then I can actually have several battleships and stuff, but they've all been sequestered in a dead system. They have them in the old Alaska system, not the new one. The new Alaska, the old Alaska is just, you know, the, uh, the system from the single player. Whereas they have an Alaska system in here that actually, you know, revitalizes that and has all, a bunch more stuff in it. Really cool stuff. I like Alaska. We'll do, maybe we'll do Alaska on our next, uh, our next video. We'll jump across there. And do some missions in Alaska. High, really high paying missions in Alaska. But you can get, you can get, you can get a large transport, 
which is nice and long and all that kind of stuff. So you can make money if you're not affiliated. But this is probably the, the heaviest uh, gun thing. And before base, and really before the Sentinels were official, this was our, our quote-unquote base of operations. We had, um, we had, as a matter of fact, what was it? There was, there was a line, it was one of the messages that came up in text that was programmed in the server that it's a PvP server, so you must take proper precautions when, when going through the server. And, of course, when we got our asteroid miner, we didn't really have a tag yet, and it was, I was, it was set up in an account on its own so multiple people could use it. I gave that out. I named it proper precautions so that it just, <laughs> man, so make sure you take proper precautions because this thing had so many guns on it. I still, I'll, we'll, we'll take proper precautions at some point too. So many things to do. So many things to do. This is probably the best view of it. Can you imagine how much fun that? Now, the interesting thing about an asteroid miner, I know you can't really land in there. That would have been great. But, um, it is an unbelievably terrible thing to fly through an actual asteroid field. Oh my goodness, you get caught up on everything. It just, it's so wide. It's, it's brutally wide to try to fly, and you know. But it's fun. Oh, I love my asteroid miner. Yeah, I was gonna just head back to the luxury liner ended here. Let's get back to Leeds. Let's, I think we've, we've exhausted Edinburgh enough. <laughs> the power of computers. See that? No, we didn't crash into each other. If you do, it's not a big deal, really, in this game. I have gotten kills on people who had barely any life left to crash into them. But really, with your shields up, not even, not even a problem. As long as you have armor, not even a problem. If you've been shot to pieces, then it's a problem. That's a problem. See now, why am I not having any any recording problems now? It's so strange. It's like she's not really. Interestingly enough, we're not getting any patrol pass at all in, in Leeds. That's really kind of strange. Well, let's head back to Planet Leeds here and just chill for a while. Let's sort of wrap things up. Maybe we'll do a little bit more exploration here. Buddy, Mrs. Leeds. Cheb... Cheberush... Cheberushka... Cheberushka. That's an interesting name. Considering that Cheberek is a, 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 a car in um, GTA 5. Cheberushka. I wonder, what the, wonder what, the, what the, the source of all this is. I don't know Russian. I know someone who knows Russian, but I don't know, don't know Russian. And he's departing. We can't, we're not going to be able to ask him. But anyway, right, here's Planet Leeds. We'll jump down to the muddy world again. <laughs> They're a lung full of dangerous carcinogens. Hang out at home for this character, because we're all at his entrance in this one. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I I think that's a video. I think we're good. So until next time, until it probably won't be in this ship. Maybe we'll mix it up a little bit, as opposed to linearly going about. We'll try and do some uh, do something new and different. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. Oh, and if there's anything you want to see, if there's anything specifically you're looking for in this game, comment in the description below. We'll try and get it for you. How's that time? Dig air. Yeah!